I'm Harry Doris Bradley, and I do product development here at Three Play. And hello, I'm uh, David Zilber, and I run Three Play Media's support site. And today we're going to be going over some of the basic features in the Three Play Media account system. Uh, we're going to give you a live demo of some of the features, as well as sharing some tips so that you can get the most out of your Three Play account. Um, I have an, uh, have an agenda over here. So we're going to be going over uploading files. Um, this is getting your video or audio files processed for transcription and captioning. Uh, we're going to go over file management and downloading. Uh, so this will be organizing and managing your files within your account and downloading your completed transcription and captioning files. Uh, we're also going to talk quickly about um, our service options um, and run through our new alignment service. And we'll be stopping to answer questions at the end of each section, so feel free to submit your questions uh, whenever they come up. Uh, you can do that by just typing them into the question window. All right. This is the page that loads after you've logged into your 3 Play Media account. Uh, if you're familiar with 3 Play Media, you might notice a few new features on this page. Uh, we recently added notifications over here. Uh, this gives you updates on your file statuses and uh, any invoices that need paying. Um, we also added 3 Play announcements here, which is uh, new product launches or webinar or other useful information. Um, and we also have some graphs down here which show you your recently uploaded files. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's dive right into uploading files now. All right, so from our home page, we're going to select Upload New Files. We offer numerous methods to upload your files to the three-play system. We're going to briefly cover four of the upload options seen here, uploading files directly from your computer, uploading using links, uploading files using FTP, or from a linked account. OK, so the first method we're going to demo is uploading from your computer. The first step here is to select files from your computer that you want to upload. So we're selecting our files. You can select up to eight videos from your computer computer that don't exceed two gigabytes each. Your videos will appear in your upload queue. You can remove any files that you don't want to upload by hitting the X button. Uh, so these files look good to me, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the upload button. So we're going to stop here and cover a few other ways of uploading first before diving into this upload menu that you're seeing, because this menu actually uh, is the same across all uploading options. So next, there's the links method. And for this method to work, the links must point to downloadable files that are transferred over HTTP. These links will typically end with a media file extension like .mov, .mp3, or .flv. YouTube links are also supported as long as they link directly to the video and the video is public in your YouTube account. So as you can see, I've just typed a link in here into the box. Um, I can type another one by hitting the plus sign, um, just, just as an example here. Um, if you have a lot of links, you might want to use the multiple uploader, which is this window here. And uh, this allows you to copy and paste um, a whole list of links in at once. Um, important here is that each link must be on a new line. So if I hit submit, you can see it's filled in all the fields on this page. Uh, it's possible here, so say I don't want these two links at the beginning, you can hit the minus to delete those. Right, and we suggest uh, having no more than 10 links at once using this method. Um, so again, once you're ready to upload, hit the upload button. And again, we're going to stop on this menu, show you another upload method, and we'll return back to this part later. So let's move on to uploading from a linked account. 
There are a few steps you need to go through in order to link your 3Play media account with a video platform or lecture capture system. Don't, load, don't worry, though. You only have to do this one time to set it up. OK, so to start this process, uh, we're going to hit the new linked account, bu account button up here. 3 Play Media offers integrations with a variety of video platforms and lecture capture systems, allowing users a streamlined workflow to caption and transcribe content. You can link to the following video platforms, Brightcove, Limelight, YouTube, Kaltura, and Uyala. You can also link to the following lecture capture systems, Tegrity, MediaSite, and Echo360. To add a new linked account, select the platform that you want to link to. So for an example here, we're going to select YouTube. Um, and here we can see the credentials needed to link this account. Um, for YouTube, the only credential you need is your YouTube username. So I'm going to type that in here. Um, and this top box is uh, it's optional. It's just if you wanted to give your account um, a name. Uh, so I'm going to leave that blank uh, as my YouTube account for now. And if you're having trouble linking accounts or finding your credentials, you can click on the link below to the uh, how-to guide, which you'll find at the bottom of the page. And that'll take you to the support site, giving you detailed information on how to set this up and find your credentials. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time to go over enabling every integration and the required credentials to do so right now. But as always, you can visit the support site for step-by-step -step articles on how to do this for every partner site. Okay, so now that I've entered my credentials, I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. Um, give it a minute. <laughs> so it's, uh, you can see here it's loaded a list of all my videos from my YouTube account. Right, and once you've linked an account, you'll be able to upload videos to 3Play directly from that account. This option is only available for Brightcove, Kaltura, YouTube, Limelight, and Uyala. The lecture capture systems work a little differently. So in order to upload videos to 3Play, um, you just need to highlight these from the list by clicking on them. And again, going straight for this big upload button. And this brings us to the same menu as before. So now we've covered all the ways of uploading through the account system directly. So let's take a look at that pop-up menu that we keep stopping at. We didn't cover FTP yet, uh, but for that option, you can just follow the instructions on the FTP page in your account. If you have lots of files to upload at once, FTP is the best option for you, or for large files. Uh, maybe we can answer some questions on that later if, um, if anyone's interested. Um, OK, so the first step in this pop-up menu is to choose a folder to put your files into. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick video tutorials. You can also create a new folder here if you want. Click next. And here you will pick uh, which service you want to use. You'll notice there's an option here called alignment only. This is a new service we launched earlier this week, actually. And we're going to take a look at that later. But for now, we're going to upload our files for the default service, transcription and captioning. OK, so now that transcription and captioning is, is highlighted, um, I'm going to select the turnaround time. Um, I'm going to go for rush in this example. Uh, this is the fastest turnaround time. Then hit next. And from this page, we're going to confirm our upload. Here you can see our different settings. Um, um, yeah, so here, this is just to confirm we have the service, transcription, and captioning. Uh, there's three files. They're going into the folder, video tutorials, and with the turnaround time of Rush. Right. And we can also see transcription settings that will be applied to our files. If these settings are not correct, you'll have to change them before completing your upload. For more information on transcription settings, you can visit the support site. So these settings, these settings are great. Um, so I'm going to go and hit Upload My Files. You can see them uploading, and it's complete. <laughs> so before we move on to My Files, are there any questions out there regarding uploading? 
Okay, uh, we have we have one question here about transcription settings. Um, so within your account, if you uh, if you go up to upload here, there's a whole page dedicated to transcription settings. Um, and here you can you can see descriptions um, for each setting that we have available. Um, so you'll want to read through all of these and decide which makes sense for your media. Anything you want to add to that? Um, you can also see here that uh, you can choose between how you want inaudible terms flagged. There's the standard method, or uh, you could also choose from clean, which uh, replaces all flag words with best guesses or inaudible, leaving no flags when finished. And as always, if there's, if there's any, more, um, any more you want to learn, you can um, click to, the, to our support page. We're going to now take a look at the My Files page, kind of the meat and potatoes of the three play media account system. So once you've uploaded your files, you'll see them listed here on the My Files page. So um, yeah, the, these three files um, that I just uploaded from YouTube are, are right here, actually. Um, quick start, uploading your media files and viewing and editing your transcript. Right. And if you, can, if you notice that icon right there, that means that the file is pending. This is the only time when you see that icon when you can cancel a file. Or if you want, you can add extra information to these files as well, which we'll, um, which we'll explain. So basically, uh, let's show how to cancel a file. What do you say? OK. All right. OK, so say, say I didn't want to transcribe um, quick start. I can select it from the list. Go up here to options and hit cancel, and uh, that's it. Cancel. Uh, you won't be charged for that file. It's it's gone. <laughs> right, as long as it's still pending. So the other the other thing you can do when the file's still pending is add information that'll assist our team of editors and quality assurance staff to uh, help. That'll just help them in the transcription process. So to add information to a file, select the file from the list the files. Then go down to File Details and click Edit Details. You can add vocabulary to your file. As I said, this helps our team of editors and, and quality assurance teams to clarify terminology that is specific to your content. You can also add a video ID here to your file. If you want to tie to platforms like Brightcove or Kaltura, you'll want to enter your video's ID that's provided by your preferred video platform. If you actually used an integration to upload your content, uh, this field will be automatically populated. So because we use YouTube here, you can see that it, it's been populated already. You can also add a description to your file. Here you can add any information that will help with the transcription process, speaker identification, perhaps links to online resources or glossaries that may be helpful. So once you're done editing, you're going to want to click Save Changes. And remember, this is always done, this is better to be done sooner rather than later. Uh, we're going to now take um, a look at some other features from the My Files page. So from this page, you can download your transcripts and captions. You can edit your transcripts and preview your content with captions, amongst other things. First, let's take a quick look at how you can organize your files. Top left here, we're looking at a list of all of the files in our account. Um, and you can see there's actually a second page, second page there. Um, so there's a few different ways we can view these files. Um, you'll notice that right now they're ordered by upload date. Um, it's also possible to order these files by file name, um, by file ID, by duration, or by delivery date. And to do that, you just have to click uh, at the header of the column. You can also filter your files by state. Clicking on the little blue arrow above the state column, we can choose what state we want to look at here. So, so let's select complete as an example. And this is going to load all our files um, in our account that have been completed. 
and you can see that they're complete by this little check mark here. So let's say you're looking for one file in particular. You'll want to use the search box on the top, of, top left here. You can search by file name or the three play media file ID or even text from your transcript. Uh, there's a few other things that you might want to do with the file. So you might want to move a file into a different folder. So um, say I decide that this file, Quick Start, I don't actually want it to be in video tutorials. Um, I'd rather have it in my default folder. Um, I can select the file from the list, go up to Options, and select Move to Folder. Here I can pick my folder that I want to move it into. So I'm going to go with Default and then hit Move. Um, so we go into default now, there is quick start. Uh, so there's another, oh yeah, you might also want to move more than one file. So um, this is possible by hitting the check checkbox here next to your file, to, and this will select more than one at once. Um, so I could actually move all of these into default all at once if I wanted. Yeah, and you can move the files even when they're pending if you want to organize them before they're finished processing. Uh, so you can also create a new folder um, if you're not happy with the ones that you've uploaded your files into. Um, this is done by hitting new folder, give it a name, uh, and hit create. One last tool that might be useful before we go on to talk about folder organization is project info. This is the I in the top right corner. It brings up information about your entire project. You can see an overview of all your file statuses, any file with difficult audio, and you have the option here to download a list of all your files for Excel. Okay. So we're now going to look at a few useful tips for organizing your folders. So uh, you'll see this is your folder list over here on the left. Um, and let's, let's go ahead and look at the, the folder drop-down menu. Yeah. So if you hover over a folder name or the folder icon, you will see a little triangle up here. Clicking on the folder icon will bring up a drop-down menu with some very useful actions. We're going to skip over download folder for now because we'll be covering that later when we talk about downloading your files. The other options here are to rename a folder, a folder info. There's the oh. name. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> folder info we have and delete a folder. Uh, so now we'll, now we'll look at what all these do. Uh, so rename lets you rename your folder. Surprise. <laughs> Um, folder info, this is similar to project info, except specifically for that folder. So um, this lists out the uh, file states for videos within that folder um, and any audio files, with, or any files with difficult audio also within that folder. And you can download a list for Excel <laughs> from that folder too. And then uh, delete a folder. So this lets you uh, delete the folder, and um, all files inside that folder will be archived. Um, I'm not sure if we have any pending files within this folder. Uh, yeah, so any files that are currently processing um, can't be archived, so uh, it won't let you delete that folder. Um, You'll notice that uh, empty folders are separated at the bottom of the folder list. This menu, the menu options uh, on empty folders are a little more limited. You can rename the folders or delete a specific folder or all of your empty folders all together. Let's now look at previewing transcripts. Once your files have completed, you'll see a check mark next to them in the file list. You can preview the transcript to a file by selecting the file, then clicking on preview transcript. It's also possible to preview your video with the captions. Let's 
as we see here. Okay, so if you're if you're looking over your transcript and you you notice something in there that you want to change, it's uh, it's possible to edit your transcript. So to do this, we're going to make sure that file is selected again in the file list, and we're going to go up to edit transcript. Oops. So on this page, it's possible to edit words. It's possible to delete words, and if you're producing an HTML transcript is also possible to do some very basic formatting here, like bold, italicize, underline, and new paragraphs. Um, um, one thing to note on this page, like if, you, if you're making uh, any changes, once you hit save, they will be permanent, so just make sure they're accurate. <laughs> So now that we've checked our transcripts, made, made any changes that we felt were necessary, we're going to download the transcript and the captions file. For a, for a single file, the downloading process is instant. So you'll want to select the file from the list of files and then click on Request Download. Then you're going to want to click on the download icon next to all the file formats that you want to download. They'll begin downloading instantly, each as separate files to your computer. You can also preview a file by, by clicking on the preview icon. So for multiple files, the downloading process may not be so instantaneous. That will depend on how many files you are downloading and in how many formats and even the duration of the transcript. To help you keep track of your files and speed up the downloading process, Replay Media compresses all of your files into a zip folder. First, either select your files from the file list. So again, hitting the checkbox next to the file name in order to select more than one. Right, or you can choose to download a whole folder at once. So if you remember this downloading menu here, or the folder menu here, um, the top option here is download folder, and that will uh, that'll let you download all completed files within that folder. So once making your selection, you're going to want to click request download. Choose your file formats, SFT, plain text, and then hit continue. And if, if you're a little confused by uh, what all these formats are exactly, uh, hovering over one will bring up a little description at the bottom. So if you're downloading a folder, your download will automatically be named the same as your folder name. If not, it will be the date. Uh, so here I'm going to call this something that makes a little more sense. Um, <laughs> so for a very big download, it might take up to a few hours. So you might want to check off the email notification option. By checking this box, you will receive an email when the zip folder has been created and is available for you to download. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this right now. I've downloaded five files. I'm not sure how long it will take, so why not? <laughs> uh, I'm going to hit Request Download now. So you can now check on the progress of your download within My Downloads. By hitting the Processing tab. This shows all of your downloads currently processing. Um, so you can see example download. This is the one we just requested. Uh, five files today and 0%. And once a download is complete, it will be available in the available list. So these are some previous downloads uh, that I've requested. And if I wanted to download these to my computer, um, I can go ahead and hit the download button. And you'll see down here that um, it's it's a .zip folder, so that'll contain all the all the all my files and all the different formats that I requested. And uh, you might this list might get kind of long after a while, so um, if you want to tidy it up and keep track of what you have downloaded and haven't, um, your downloads here and hit clear. 
and this will just remove it, remove it from that list. Before we go any further, does anyone out there have any questions? So someone's asking a question about, is there a limit to the amount of files you can download? And there actually aren't. You can download as many file formats or as you want, uh, no extra charge. So that was a good question. So let's talk about another great tool that's included in your 3Play Media account. And this is the ability to create and publish an interactive video plugin. An interactive plugin attaches to an existing video player and can be embedded on any website. We're going to take a look at creating a plugin now and the different settings you can apply to it. In order to start creating a plugin, there's a few things that must be set up. First, within your 3Play Media account, content publishing must be enabled. Account admins will have access to this. So here you can see we have content publishing enabled. Um, for more information about this, you can check our support site. <laughs> and secondly, once you've decided which video you want to add a plug into, you'll have to find this video's embed code. This embed code may need to be modified. These modifications vary significantly depending on which video player you use to publish your content. We don't have time to go into the specifics of every video player right now. You can find all that information on our support site as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to run through a quick example here. So um, for our video plugin here, it's a it's a Brightcove player, and um, we're going to want to find the embed code for this video. So I have that I have that here, um, and we'll be needing some information from this in a second once we. Uh, once we get started with the publishing plugin process. All right, so we're going to assume that you've enabled content publishing and have your video embed code modified and ready to go. So the next step is to select the completed file that correlates to your video. I'm just looking for that. Okay, here it is, publishing an interactive transcript. Um, and we're going we're gonna to hit publish plugin. So get started. Select the video player that you use to publish your video. So we, we're using the Brightcove player. And the second step here is to enter your video player ID. So there's an example here of where you can find that within the code. Um, and it's we're looking for an object ID, my experience. Uh, so within our embed code over here, we can see object ID. Um, and it's my experience, 764, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm going to copy this and paste it in this box. Ooh. Then we're going to hit continue. All right. So now we're going to choose our plugin type. We're going to pick the interactive transcript plugin. So this plugin allows users to read ahead and click a word to play the video from that point. It also allows users to search the video and again play the video from that point. So you're gonna show off a few of these features here. All right. So you can see the uh, the highlighted section here is following following the words as the video plays, um, and you can you can jump ahead and click, and the video will start playing from that. You can, you can search the term as well, a term from the transcript. Three play. Oh, found three play. <laughs> and if you click on that point, it shows where one of our hits re was returned and jumps right to that point in the video. So you can, you can choose to apply the following settings to the interactive transcript to design it. We have uh, different settings here. We have the skin which defines the aesthetic of the interactive transcript. You can choose from either frost or ice. Collapse gives your audience the choice to collapse and expand the interactive transcript. Collapse on load, this will uh, collapse the interactive transcript by default when the page loads. Printable transcripts gives your audience the option to print the transcript. Download the transcript allows your audience the opportunity to download the text of the transcript. And enable scan view 
This enables your audience to toggle between a normal view of the transcript and a scan view, a scan view working similar to a tag cloud displaying reoccurring words in a larger font. So once you've designed, designed your plugin, you'll need to click Update Preview, then follow the instructions to copy and paste the embed code onto your website along with your video embed code. And of course, more information is always available on our support site. Okay, so to continue with our example, we're going to copy this code here and um, just paste it in into our raw code where we, where we want the plugin to go. Um, and the finished results should be over here. You can see that our, our video now has a transcript at the bottom. You can see those icons. Those are the icons that you see we have our print transcript, our download, scan view. Great. <laughs> so one last tip before we move on. Uh, if you find that your My Files page is becoming kind of cluttered and hard to look at, with old files you don't need anymore, you might find it useful to archive your files. Okay, so if, yeah, if you are uploading a lot of files and um, downloading them right after they complete, you might find that this just gets full of files that you don't really need anymore. Uh, so just like Dave said, we can archive these. Um, pretty straightforward, select your files, go up to options and hit archives. So they're now gone from our main main file list and have been moved into archive files. And uh, from here, it's possible to restore these uh, if you made it if you made a mistake and didn't need to archive it. So I think we're done with my files for now. The last topic we're going to talk about are the different service options that 3Play Media offers. Those of you who are familiar with 3Play might notice a new service that we've added called Alignment. And the Alignment service is for users who already have transcripts for their media files. Um, when a media file and transcript are submitted for alignment, the transcript is time synchronized with the media file. Therefore, for users who already have transcripts for their media files, the Alignment service offers a faster, less expensive way to create captions and or use 3Play Media interactive video plugins. To use the alignment service, you can upload your media files through any of the methods we covered earlier. FTP works a little differently, so just make sure you read the instructions on your FTP upload page. Okay, so let's, let's just get to that pop-up again. Um, I'm going to just paste in a link here uh, for an example. Select the folder again. Okay, so at this point, Rather than hitting caption, transcription and captioning, we're going to select the alignment only option. Um, and there's, there's a description here that will tell you more about it um, if you're unsure. Um, so we're going to hit next again and uh, just confirm this upload. So this is us uploading the video. Um, for the alignment service, we also need to upload a transcript to go along with that video. So after you've hit upload here, uh, you'll be taken to this page, Transcripts for Alignment. Uh, you can also find this page from the uh, upload navigation here. Uh, it's also under the tab up here, Transcripts for Alignment. So at this point, this is when you, when you enter the transcript that goes with your video. Uh, so in order to enter the transcript, you can simply copy and paste it in. Uh, you can also drag and drop a plain text file into the box. So let's see what I have. Okay, so uh, this is my plain text file right here. I'm just going to drag that and drop it in the box. You'll want to make sure that you check this transcript before uploading. Um, and you'll want to read 
probably want to read this article, Best Practices for Transcript Alignment too. It's got a lot of information about how to treat speaker identifications. And once that's all set, just hit save and uh, you can submit it. Any final questions, guys? We have a question out there. Is there a limit to the storage for archiving? There is unlimited space for those. So yeah, don't worry about filling this archive file section up. All right. All right. Okay. That's it, guys. Thanks for <laughs> joining us. Yeah, um, looking good. If, and if you do come up with any questions, just feel free to contact us, and uh, we'll write back. <laughs> yeah, you can always write to us at support at freeplanemedia.com, and always happy to help you out. Okay. Bye.